Thanks for joining us on The Life and the Land is in Its Real Estate. I'm Keenan Isley, and I'm an agent at Keller Williams in Honolulu. I am an entrepreneur. So as we start 2021, I want to focus on entrepreneurs and the impact that COVID had on them. So today I have Tara Hoti with Rush Height Waihini here to talk with us about Rush Waihini and how did, uh, uh, well, first, Tara, I'll just let you tell us about yourself. Sure. Thank you so much for having me. Uh, first of all, today of all days, so honored to show up in this space with what's happening around us in the world. Huge, huge, huge marks for Waihini around the world, and I'm just so grateful to be here to witness it. So thanks for sharing and having me on today. I really appreciate the time. Um, I am Tara Fodi. I am an agent by trade as well, but I am also the founder of Rush Wahine, which is a locally owned business who a membership business who caters to women entrepreneurs by entrepreneurs, really. Um, you know, the reason why it was founded uh, in 2014, I, I left the hotel industry after about 15 years. And I started my first events business. And I think it's standard for a lot of people, normal, I should say, to start a business from an industry you came from, because that's where you feel most comfortable in, it's home. Uh, and I was, as I was navigating this new space as a business owner, I was attending all of these events that really targeted the new business owner, the small business owner, the women owned business, the minority business owner who needed tools and all of these things. Um, and, and I was networking in that space like I was accustomed to, but I really realized as a business owner versus a hotelier, my, my needs was much different in that space, you know, in the networking space as a new business owner. And so when I didn't find um, a community that really I could sit and talk and really unmask with and really share my wins, but also my fears and all of my um, losses and, and just this, the path that I've been on and where I could learn and share, uh, that's how I founded Rush Vahine. I really wanted to bring a space, a safe space to women entrepreneurs that are non-competitive, um, that you know we can really thrive on learning by sharing versus selling. Um, and truly lean on each other to be mutually beneficial and mutual mentors. Um, I, I, you know, there's a high level principle about the lean in factor where it's really set up for CEOs uh, level and higher. And I think in Hawaii, we have uh, such a wider breadth of experience, industries, and really um, personal lens and experience. And so with that, I, I, without boxing anyone into how savvy we are or experience, more so how can I learn from what you've been through and what can, you know, what mistakes can I prevent? In addition to that, providing um, business ownership education through workshops, uh, as well as all the tech tools that we use and sort of like help us get through navigating today's work landscape, which is obviously have, has evolved from Small, small business ownership as a whole, and then more importantly, and obviously most recently through COVID. Yes. So I found um, your group and was invited by another member and did find it to be just a great place to connect. I wasn't there to necessarily sell real estate. I was there to, to just learn and be with others. And there were other agents there. And it, it was kind of, you know, they even shared tips and tricks. Um, and even through this last year of a lockdown, it's been nice to have, um, I guess, a home to come back to. Um, and we have had to do things differently. So how, how did entrepreneurs that you know handle the situa situation for the last 10 months? I mean, it's been such a roller coaster, I think, between, um, you know, excuse my language, but, you know, fuck it, we're going to get through it. And we're super gung-ho and we're not scared. Uh, and then also we shift to a lot of fear and emotion and, and um, distress that comes with just the, the noise from outside politically um, and then from a business standpoint. And, um, you know, for those, the businesses who were sort of already on the verge of um, merging the life of, you know, working from home, working remote, automating business or, or doing virtual connection like we have for the past several years, uh, 
I think we had a little bit of an advantage because it wasn't so much of a shock value of like shifting systems, hard copies or anything like that. And also we were already communicating virtually and remotely. So we know how to delegate and communicate with that lens, which is completely different from being able to knock on someone's door to talk about anything or strategize or even to have a sip of coffee with someone, right? So um, I think more the biggest and most obvious pivot, if I can use that word anymore, which we're all sort of burned out from, I get it, um, has been obviously just the transition to more virtual online communication, really increasing engagement virtually, providing opportunities to still remain relevant. Um, and I think that for those who have really been able to say, okay, you know, what the fit without the physical boundaries that that we're limited to because of what's happening, how can we still find a space to evolve and not just evolve, but continue growing in the space. And um, most of the entrepreneurs, especially our, our our members have um, really been um, supportive and, and loving through it, through it because it's not easy for everyone uh, to continue showing up in this space while just really removing the emotional and, and, and sort of like heavy political uh, cloud that's been really looming outside of, outside of the health risk of COVID and deaths and, and, and all of that. Um, so I think obviously just shifting from physical any type of connectivity to online and then showing up in the right space. I mean, you've developed this show during that time, you have another thing going in that time. So just finding ways to um, remain connected through this space has been the biggest shift, I think. Yeah, just ways to overcome it. Um, so are there any you know, examples that stand out to you, success stories that you saw where people you know, totally did again, pivot, we hate that word now, um, and overcome to, to stay on, on the path of success? I mean, I think we're all finding our own, lens, you know, sort of, I, I don't have one rock star story. Um, what I will say is that we've all sort of found our own voice in our own space, and that's successful in itself. And what I mean by that is, um, there's people and, you know, women are some of our members and business owners who never even scratched social media before this. And I'm not just talking about membership of ours and, and business owners that we have connections with, but small business owners, you know, who didn't rely on the lifeline of Wi-Fi and that virtual connectivity. And so I think anyone who's been able to withstand this and not just, you know, we're not all, we might not all be green and banging it out this year, but at the minimum, still being in the proper mindset and the, and the space of, of trying, um, of persevering, of really understanding that there is tomorrow and, and really finding success in, in that way so that you can show up your best self every day. Yeah. It was just those that still show up and didn't, and didn't just give up. Yeah. And, um, and I've seen a lot of, uh, excuse me. Yeah, go ahead. I've just seen a lot of um, reinvention of 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 oneself, and you know, for rush our year, our word power word this year is reinvention, reinvention of oneself and one's business, and that's so important as we climb out of um, what we just came out of and really dive into something greater beyond probably what we've been manifesting, you know, all this time, and just wishing and hoping that we could still have that we don't have anymore, and seeing what that sort of culminates. Um, to this year and see, you know, what, what it breathes life into. But um, I've seen complete shifts of, of businesses shut down and, and start up again with new passions and things that they may have been dabbling on and finally have the opportunity. Um, people are being forced to choose themselves. People are being forced to choose um, what makes you happy, uh, you know, uh, where you want to spend your time and energy. We're being forced to not look at uh, the monetary attachment anymore. It's so important that we develop, find peace and protect that. And I think, you know, that in itself is, is such a huge uh, leap in just finding gratitude of the present. Yes, yes. So I, I know in, in our industry, in, in the real estate industry, we saw a lot of people go to virtual open houses, lots of video tours, lots of videos by agents sharing, um, myself included, sharing topics and ideas. And um, what other um, shifts have you seen that people have been doing? Is there anything that you know pops out at you that says, wow, they weren't doing that before, but it seems to be working now? Um, I, I think the, the biggest, 
uh, lend on our industry if it hasn't already happened to you as an agent or any other agents out there, brokers, anyone in our industry would be to, um, um, how can I say this? Uh, help each other yeah. grow. Um, being more of a, um, a mentor to each other and not, not holding things so close to, to our, 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 our chest and protecting that. Um, that probably is, is outside of anything, you know, all the digital stuff and, and all the cool stuff happening from the tech world that, you know, technology hates me. So I can only speak to what I'm, my Instagram account. No, I, I'm kidding, but for real, it, it's, it's such a, that in itself is such a, um, I, a skill set that that we we've come to over time really underestimate because of the handy tools we have at our fingertips, right? So photography, digital work, digital art, um, film, uh, everything from having models now come into play. You know, you're seeing these really extravagant productions. I would say, you know, less time on the everyday connection in person, more time on the marketing and more time on really creating the feel from afar, right? Being able to connect and, and virtually place someone there while they're not present. And so a lot of energy I think is taking place more on that in that arena. Um, on the digital marketing side, obviously, where we spend our money um, is obviously, you know, changing. And, and not, not by our own um, choice either, by the way, there's huge companies who are now fumbling their way through it. Uh, you know, I, I'll speak to it. Zillow in the most recently has made some huge changes in, in fees for agents and how they really interact with our MLS system, how we can continue posting on there at a certain level of investment membership relation or not. And, and so, you know, when we look at the models in that space and, and we think we're one agent from these huge monster corporations who are still trying to navigate, um, we just have to sort of lean on each other in this way and say what has really worked for you and, and sort of just erase the, the competitive sticker that we've always had in us. And, the, and look, that's never going to go away. We yeah. need that. Yeah. We need that in us. That's part of our, that's what makes our blood pump. We know it, you know, from a sales, from a sales perspective, if this is, this is my, this is my, this is my skill set. This is my strength. It's my wheelhouse and it's innate. It's in me, right? It's not something you can really um, develop or teach. You can master it. You can, you can definitely master it. But um, I do think that outside of the obvious technical tools that can can enhance the experience of really bringing someone virtually into the homes or the property or which or the commercial space whatever you're trying to show them has really been the agent to agent connectivity and the agent to agent enhancement and that's where my focus and energy goes to yes so i i mean i for one do miss the the one-on-one -on -one, the personal connection mm -hmm. um because that is how i i thrive um but I, I was able to still um, stay on track even without it. Um, now we do know those of us that that did stumble. We we had colleagues that stumbled. We had other um, industries where they stumbled. So do you think they can recover? Um, <clears throat> what so, you mean, uh, in really, you mean those who may have closed are on the verge, or what would you? What? Yeah, the the entrepreneurs that they, they couldn't make it through COVID. Is there a chance for them? Do you, you know, in your opinion, for 2021? Oh yeah, I mean, you know, at the end of the day, I think we can all agree that irrespective of industry, irrespective of product, irrespective of platform, business is business is business. Right, and so when you have that understanding, the functional foundational pieces of operating and managing and and helping a business grow, you can redevelop anytime, really re reinvent anytime, because it's not industry related all the time. While you can learn those things, it's truly the mindset of being able to elevate yourself to the fifty thousand lens, bring yourself down thirty, twenty ground level, right learn, develop, strengthen your skill set, go back out, teach, grow, mentor. I mean, it's a cyclical success formula if you can um, get yourself out of your own way thinking that you're only supposed to do this or what you think you're supposed to be doing. 
So absolutely. Now, while it might not be in the business model that has failed through this time, these times, it doesn't mean that's the end of the business owner or the entrepreneur. That's just a re, just a start of something new, really. Um, so are there certain steps that you would recommend? Um, I mean, being that you started a business, um, you basically started over. Is there are there steps that you can recommend someone would take? Absolutely. I mean, I, you know, outside of the standard process of, you know, going through your mind maps and what you're passionate about and sort of developing, finding those tools along the way that can help create a clear path for you. Um, I think being able to reset and really revisit what's important to you and, and what you want out of your next 10 years, right? So you start looking at a little development plan for yourself or, or what's important. Now, I know that in the start of the year, a lot of businesses and people, and we all do, we look at our goals and we set them up and then we work throughout the years to um, really chunk them down. And while there, you know, for me, a, a simple success formula for the goal setting and meeting is, is to identify four high level goals throughout the year, break them down per quarter. So if you're going to develop a, and keep it simple, but all it should be simple, but, all, but it should be, it should take your business to the next level. Right. What I'm saying is, if you don't have a website yet, make that Q2 or Q3 and really use that quarter, that three month to punch it out. So at the end of the year, you have all of these four huge goals that will really take your business to the next level completed. So that's a simple formula of identifying. Now you can do eight goals, whatever you want, but make sure it's attainable because that's what we end up doing. We, we, we don't want to be, uh, we want to keep it attainable for us and keep it realistic for ourselves. So identify SMART goals, specific, measurable, attainable. Yes. You um, know, I, I don't know the rest of the acronym. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about. And then secondarily, um, that's obviously one side from uh, the professional lens. And then I, I think, you know, this year where Rush is really focusing on what I call our labs or lens of abundance. And what does that look like outside of your professional or, or business goals? And that breaks down to five different categories that really make your life whole. Family relationships, personal development, spirituality finance and, and in that scope. So adding another touch to your personal side to ensure that you're filling your entire cup and not just focusing on these business goals. And, and um, I think that, especially if you're in a, in a position, well, at any, any point, even if you're rebuilding or if you're continuing to build is, is always a good thing to check within self and, and just do an assessment and make sure that all the efforts and things you're working on are working and meeting towards these goals or, you know, lens of abundance meeting points that you want to attain. All right. So through all that, through the goal settings, you're trying to um, get where, you know, you want to go. Sometimes it's really hard to stay positive. So how, how do you help people stay positive? Are, are there networks or groups they can connect with to, to stay, to keep that positivity going? I mean, I think the biggest thing that has helped so many of our members throughout this time has been, like you said, there's been a home for us, steady that we know we can come back to. Um, and outside of that, really to make sure that the community you're continuing to go home to is a community that's going to continue to make sure to hold you accountable as well. Make sure you show up and, and push you to, to challenge yourself and not sort of succumb to, you know, um, sort of the, the cloud that a lot of us has been living through over this past 10 months. And I, I think that, um, you know, setting yourself up with, you know, mandatory business meetings for yourself, CEO meetings that we call it for ourselves, or masterminds with, with other um, entrepreneurs that can really help you grow is key in, in staying connected through this time. Not just that, um, that you're just showing up and, and making more friends online, but really making sure that the connections that you're creating are gonna continue throughout beyond this time. And then you can really start doing work together. You know, specifically for Rush Bahine, we offer masterminds for our members um, year round. And so we set up goals, uh, challenges throughout the month so that we're on the same page. We um, meet online virtually twice a month. And, and, and every month there's one business that gets um, basically within that pod, there's only four business owners per group and, and that keeps it um, honest and that keeps it, keeps us present 
um, and it holds us accountable to really meeting our goals and identifying that. So we really act as each other's um, advisory boards, right? When we're solopreneurs, yourself, myself, working from home, as much as we can have an extended team of ourselves so that we can um, operate and do support in logistics, uh, from the planning side, from the business planning side, and, and from the CEO mindset, like who's really operating your business, we're not having the everyday discussions about finances. We're not having the everyday discussions about PL. We're not looking at forecasts. We're not talking budget. We're not doing all of those things. And so um, I think, you know, the, the, the format we've set up and the platform we set up to provide support for our members through this mastermind uh, program has been uh, probably the, the greatest key and success factor for us to continue um, showing up and making sure that that we're being held accountable and still make, still reaching our goals and, and more importantly, creating them. So with all of that, if there is someone out there who was thinking that they may start a business in 2021, what, what would you recommend? Would you recommend starting the business? I'm always going to say yes to and at any year, <laughs> you know, and I'm going to always say yes to that because I think that if you, if you have enough passion for it, if you, um, if you have enough uh, tenacity, if you want it bad enough, you can create it. So uh, without the year, <laughs> you know, without COVID, um, even with COVID, I do encourage anyone to who wants to establish um, a legacy beyond them, uh, really find financial stability for themselves, financial independence. And I think that's probably the greatest gift from, uh, from Rush to other women business owners is that we're providing the tools of, of so that you are never really reliant or dependent on anyone beside you outside of your immediate self. And now it's not to, um, prevent you from leaning on your, your spouse or really engaging in your marriage and or relationship and being present or, or you know, um, separating. It's really to um, never, never have to. And um, I think anyone who's experienced loss through COVID, whether it's personal, um, business, financial, I think it's all hit us somewhere in our core. And if that sparks something in you to explore business or if just the sheer fact that you never want to be in this fucking position again beyond your means and control of like being furloughed or laid off, then the short answer is yes, because then only you can protect that onward. So what um, support is out there? Um, I know there's there's Rush Rahini. Sure. How can they get involved and, and get the word out that they have started a new business? Um, you know, well, Rush Rain obviously is, is, is one community and, and resource for women business owners. There's so many others that we work with, we connect with, we support, um, like organizations like ourselves. And then obviously there is the YWCA, um, S Small Business Association, there's scores, mentorship. Uh, there's a lot of organizations and resources out there for small business owners. Um, our member in peace organization is a nonprofit based out of the West side. They provide workshops, financial education, um, and, and just all the resources and tools for you, for anyone to start the business specifically for Rush Wahine. We, um, you know, we cater to women who are, uh, professionally driven who want to explore beyond their vantage point. Now, whether you're budding, curious, or savvy, um, there's a sp space for you. So it really is about uh, meeting you where you are and helping you elevate and grow from that point through education, empowerment, and encouragement. Uh, <laughs> Rushwehine.com. I'm not, is that where I, I, I feel like you might ask me where that is. So absolutely you can find us in all of the, uh, the social media feeds. But um, most importantly, I, I, I don't sell membership and maybe that's why this might be a little awkward for me, but I, I, I always say I, I'm not, I don't sell membership even as, as the founder and, and as the CEO of Rush Wahine, our members share our, sell our membership based on their success. Um, so maybe you can tell um, any woman or business owner, entrepreneur looking to jump in or, or explore Rush to see what, what they would gain as a member. Yeah, you, you basically offer relationship. I never felt like you were trying to sell me a membership. 
Um, it was more about the relationships. Mm -hmm. So is there anything else that you want to add? We, we have just a couple minutes left. Any inspiration for folks out there? Um, in what sense? I have a lot. Let me pick. <laughs> <laughs> um, Oh, what I want to say is, you know, uh, to really try and um, find something, not resolution, um, not, you know, anything like that, but really find an av your avatar for the year. You know, who do you want to be this year? Um, for me, I came up with uh, who, 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 you know, who's the Rosh Vahine this year? And the Rosh Vahine is a a uh, woman of action who's building beyond tomorrow. And that is important to um, explore and dive into because I think so often we are present for the immediate gratification and there's there it, there, it, it doesn't exist anymore outside of tangible. And we have to look beyond what our currency is in our relationships and where we spend our time. So whether that's with another organization, membership group that you spend your time with, that we you pay dues to, um, subscribe to, ensure that they're feeding your soul, that they're serving you, and that you are getting something out of it, true partnership and reciprocation. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us on the Life of the Land is in its real estate. Um, it's great to be back for 2021. Yes. And I will see you all in two weeks, where we hope to have an economist to talk about Where's the economy going after all of this? What can we expect in 2021? So thank you so much. Thank Tech Hawaii. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Tara. Mm -hmm. And I will see you all in a couple of weeks.